I'm in Bitcoin for some time now and I still see people overpaying the fees. In this video I will explain what are Bitcoin fees and how to manually choose a fee rate so you won't ever overpay for making a Bitcoin transaction in the future. When I recorded this video some wallets proposed me up to $5 fees for a simple Bitcoin transaction. First of all, what are Bitcoin fees? Most of Bitcoin value transfers have a set of inputs and outputs. In short, the fee for specific transaction is the difference between values of outputs and the value of inputs. All unconfirmed transactions, so transactions created by users, are standing in a queue, waiting to be included in the next mined Bitcoin block. This queue is called memory pool or mempool in short. The new block can be compared to a bus and on average there is one bus coming every 10 minutes to the bus stop. It can be late or ahead of time, but average is 10 minutes. The miners are playing the roles of ticket collectors. They take tickets of all the passengers and wait them. I mean wait the passengers. Wait, you ask me, how can you wait a Bitcoin transaction? It's fairly easy and simplifying, you can just take its weight in computer storage units. In our case, transactions are pretty small and take usually up to few hundred bytes. The more inputs, outputs or custom instructions, the fatter the transaction and the more it weights. So ticket collectors are waiting the transactions, they also check the fees on these transactions and they put the transactions in the queue, starting from the ones that have the highest fee for the wait. In Bitcoin's case this measurement is Satoshi per byte. From now on I will call this fee for a wait value a fee rate. So queue is constantly changing, new transactions are coming in and they are taking their place in this queue called mempool. But once the new bus comes to the station, they are all immediately crammed into it, especially the ones in front of the queue and the bus is immediately leaving. Bus here is a newly mined Bitcoin block and after SegWit there is about 1.5 megabyte space in every block or bus. Previously it was about 1 megabyte. Uh, if you calculate the fee rates as satoshi per byte, it's still about one megabyte, satoshi per virtual byte is a bit more. So how to manually judge the fees you want to pay? First of all, go to the website Joho's Bitcoin mempool and check the latest two hour mempool size in megabyte chart. I would guess it should show about 12 events that happened. How do I know it should be around 12? As it shows the newly mined blocks. Every vertical down interval is the newly mined block, taking about 1.5 megabyte of transactions off the top of mempool stack. And this mempool stack is just our queue. With lower priority transactions, the lowest price to weight ratio in Satoshi per byte at the bottom and highest price to weight ratio on the top. The smallest standard fee is 1 satoshi per byte and standard transaction is around 200 bytes for one input to output transaction. On the chart the different fee rates have different colors with the smallest fee 1 satoshi per byte being blue up to enormous fees in hundreds of satoshis per byte in red and purple. The chart vertical scale is showing megabytes of data already waiting in the mempool to get into newly mined blocks. So if you will hover the mouse on chart, it should show you how much of fees are there on top of this heap. Remember, around 1 to 1.4 megabyte is being put into next block. So hover on the right side of the chart, it's the most actual one, and you will see how big of the fees you'd have to pay for trans your transaction to get into next block. But it would only be accurate if the block would happen just after you publish this transaction like right now. The more the current block stalls, the bigger chance of someone else to make a transaction with higher fees outbidding you and moving your transaction lower in the queue. That's why using default wallet settings will always cost you as wallet is adding additional fees in anticipation of more transactions going into the mempool. But what if you don't care about speed that much? I'm moving funds between my wallets pretty often 
and I don't care if they arrive 10 minutes from now or in next few days. That's why I like to use similar chart but zoomed out. Now we can see mountains of fees. For 30 days chart the mempool got up to 95 megabytes. So if there would be no more transactions happening it would take about 100 blocks to clear which is about 16 hours. But these periods of empty mempool also happen especially when there is no price movement. Let's zoom out even more. This is the whole history of mempool since 2017 and we can observe few price actions on the mempool, especially 2017 rally to almost $20,000 per coin. Mempool reached about 300 megabytes in December 2017, but after April 2018 almost all the time one could publish one satoshi per byte transaction and it would be mined in just few days. Up to April 2020 when price again started to rise rapidly in some multi-week periods. It's not all for the resources. I would advise also to use mempool.space, it has a bit less advanced visual tools but it's better if someone doesn't want to think and needs really fast and reliable confirmations in the cheapest possible way. Mempool.space shows basic dashboard with some charts similar to the Johan Henicke website we were visiting before. But on the top of the website there is a visual representation of the blocks recently mined. On the right, an educated guess based on current mempool data on how the next few blocks would look like if they all be mined right now. On the left side, as seen in 15 blocks we could expect 4 satoshi per byte transactions but it's just a prediction. Predicting based on past is hard. Imagine predicting Bitcoin price. Not possible. So many people were telling the bull run is coming since early 2018. They were telling it for 3 years before it really happened. Same thing with fees. One day some exchange may dump all the transactions into mempool and prioritize them to be consolidated. Actually, Following the mempool and feature is pretty interesting and educative. If you want to know more, I suggest following Merch on Twitter. He's providing different analyses of current mempool data and it's really interesting. For example, I made a Bitcoin transfer on 4th January. Lightning Wallet was proposing me default rate of 75 satoshis per byte. Samurai Wallet was proposing 62 satoshis per byte, but I wasn't in hurry. I used 3 satoshis per byte, 20 times lower fee than proposed and it almost went through. Maybe one more block and it would went in. Remember, mempool.space was showing me that 4 satoshi per byte is enough to, to be in like next 15 blocks and that was true, that was actually true. But later on the price skyrocketed again and mempool got swamped. Still, I was much closer with my predictions than any wallets. And if I want, I can pay more now. There are two features. One is replaced by fee, where creator of transaction bumps the fee and pushes again to the mempool. And the other one is called child pays for the parent, where the receiver can create a transaction that's trying to spend unconfirmed transactions UTXO. In this case, miner trying to mine my child pays for parent transaction would also have to mine the previous, still unconfirmed transactions to get the mining fees. Thanks for watching this video, if you liked it please uh, hit the thumbs up button underneath, maybe write me a comment what do, did you like the most about it, uh, have you learned something, maybe? <laughs> so yeah, that's all for today, keep doing Bitcoin things and have a nice day, bye!